And so I would say, all things considered, this was a reasonably successful, relatively successful tour, because Australia were up against it. Uh, they're playing against a, a team that's much, got a much stabler 11, got much better form behind them, and pretty much in a really good position to launch into the 2019 World Cup. And so the fact that they were able to at least win one game from the series as a consolation seems that they at least had something to take away from this when you could have easily imagined. Considering the fact that Australia won the fourth game of the series and so India won the first three, you could have easily imagined that there would be a situation where India could have whitewashed them and in fact uh, some commentators were talking about India trying to get a perfect 10 by defeating Sri Lanka and Australia 5-0 in their respective one day international series. So to win this one game was quite reasonable, all things considered. It's going to be interesting to see what the Australian One Day International lineup looks like in January when the One Day International series against England commences. It's, there's only five One Day Internationals happening this summer, just like what happened four years ago, and it's really disappointing. Um, because they'll have Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood back. And they'll also have Pat Cummins and Nathan Coulter Nile. That's four really great, great fast bowlers. Unfortunately, they won't have James Patterson in contention because he has already nominated himself to be gone for this entire summer with a very serious back injury, stress fac stress fractures. But even without Patterson, it's still a very strong fast bowling lineup and the question is will Australia just go with all pace they could easily do this they've already shown that they have quite an interest in Travis Head as being a good enough spin bowler that he can play a major role which is quite amusing. Which is quite amusing when you think about it. Um, ever since they decided that they were not going to play Xavier Doherty anymore in the Australian One Day International Eleven, then they came, went for Cameron Boyce, but then they decided to swap over for Adam Zampa. And Zampa has been in the Australian one day setup for the past couple of years. But Steve Smith, as captain, has been more or less inclined to figure that having any spin bowler to bowl 10 overs, one or none for 55, is good enough. He doesn't want a spin bowler who can bowl very tight or to take lots of wickets. He just wants a reasonably good bowler just to slow down the rate of boundaries and not go for a big score like 80 or 70. And so he's figuring that uh, the risk with a full-time spinner is too great and because he doesn't have a batting ability it's too much of a cost. And so it just makes sense to bowl a dibbly dab off spinner and the first Dibley Dab off spinner they employed was Glenn Maxwell and now they've just swapped over to Travis Head and so now Glenn Maxwell almost bowls no overs 
at all for Australia in one day internationals and yet Head will often bowl more than five and considering the fact that Travis Head when he was playing for South Australia was almost entirely a batsman who rolled his arm over for one or two overs the fact that Travis Head now is taking wickets and bowling regular overs for Australia in one day internationals both tells you how far he's gone developing as a bowler but also exactly um, how Australia's lack of interest in quality spin bowling is concerned and of course we can't really tell for sure what factor at play is affecting what because as the pitches continue to be very flat as administrators continue to be obsessed with having very large one day international scores spinners just become easy fodder for um, getting you know conceding 70 or 80 or 90 to make sure that that boost up into the 300 mark actually happens and so as spin bowlers become less and less important in one day internationals across the world it makes sense that Australia will just lose interest in them the other factor is of course the pitches whatever for whatever reason the Australian pitches are just not spinning anymore and so the idea of having someone like Brad Hogg or Shane Warne or Peter Taylor who could just not only uh, bowl very tight but take wickets because the pitch assists the, him in the bowling of spin just isn't going to happen anymore and so the idea of just abandoning spin bowling in one day internationals is on the cards and you could just either bowl uh, a, a dibbly dab off spinner like Travis Head or Glenn Maxwell or some sort of medium pace bowler like Moses Henriques.